Hi everyone, I'm Paola. And I'm Maddie. And we're back for the second half of the Taking the Next Step podcast mini series. So we created these two podcasts to get the word out about the college application and admissions process and about the college experience from the perspectives of first gen and Latinx students here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. We want to make these experiences as transparent as possible for you all to show that they can be something exciting and not something scary. To share a little with you all about ourselves, in case you missed the first episode, I'm originally from a small town in Mississippi. I'm a rising senior this year studying Spanish and government as a part of Wofford's class of 2021. And just to throw something in there about me, in my free time, you can either find me outdoors baking brownies or watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine on Hulu. I live with Maddie this summer, and I can personally say that those brownies are delicious. You're definitely giving me too much credit. (laughs) Brownies aside, I, Paola, am from Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm a Honduran and Salvadoran American, and I'm entering into my sophomore year as a first-generation college student. I am majoring in sociology, anthropology, and Spanish as part of Wofford's class of 2023. And uh, some fun facts about me is I love storytelling through music and songwriting, and I love thrift shopping. Awesome. So now that we've gotten our introductions out of the way, in our last episode, we discussed in detail some of the important information needed during the college application and admissions process. And I must say, I highly recommend that if you have any extra time on your hands, you listen to it if you're in high school or know someone who may be interested in learning more about the logistics behind applying to college. However, for the second episode, we want to share stories instead of facts and stats to give you all a taste of the college experience from a student's perspective. I just finished my freshman year of college last spring, and wow, I have a lot to share. My freshman year was one of the most life-changing experience I've ever had. I was personally very excited to venture out into a different world and experience college. I grew up with strict but loving parents and wanted the taste of freedom that college could provide. Also, sorry papa if you're listening, I love you, te quiero. Anyway, I think college helped me understand and manage my family dynamic better. I grew up with very strong family roots, and my family comes first and will always come first. Well, when I started thinking about applying to colleges, I always dreamed of going to big cities and exploring a different place far away from my hometown. But my family told me they would prefer for me to stay nearby. So I chose to go to school in Spartanburg, an hour and a half away from home seemed like a pretty good compromise. And although I felt very excited for college and was doing well overall, there is this nagging feeling that was very persistent in my life. I often felt feelings of disconnect and loneliness. When I would go home, I felt like my family had moved on and didn't need me for everyday tasks anymore. I used to always grocery shop and take care of my little brother and do secretarial tasks for my dad, like translate texts and emails for him and work all the technology in the house, which is usually the birthright of the oldest child. But the first time I came home from college, things just felt so different. And although I still do tasks for my family when I come home, I felt like I was no longer needed as much as I was before. I sometimes felt like I was intruding and felt like I was interrupting the balance of the routines my family picked up to be able to go about their day without my help. So after acknowledging that I felt like a stranger in my household, I was also able to distinguish my primary emotion, guilt. Guilt that I was no longer constantly there for my family. Guilt that I left my little brother without an older sibling to hang out with after school. This feeling would get in the way of experiencing college to the fullest. But I decided to put matters into my own hands and have a family meeting a couple of months into the semester. I explained that although they wouldn't understand how I felt as a college student, you know, being a first generation college student, I would like for them to try to understand me. I said that I wanted to be very involved and dive into my college experience, but it would not be fully possible if I was constantly feeling guilty about not coming home every weekend or every chance I could. My family tries their best to understand, and although this feeling is still present sometimes, I understand that I am the first in my direct family to go through this, and there is no rule book. I want to experience college the way I feel most comfortable in, and I feel comfortable when I'm very involved. So I joined Campus Union, I joined the Organization of Latin American Students, I joined Wofford's Women of Color, and I always played music in the Campus Life Building to build relationships with my peers. 
I had an amazing first year, and I grew so much as a person because of my liberal arts education. I developed my love for learning. In high school, I took classes that I was forced to take, but here in college, I have a variety of options. I have never taken a class I thought was boring, and I love the clubs I've joined, the events I've attended, and the relationships I've built with my professors, and above all, the friends I've made. Attending college hasn't always been the easiest journey, but it's taught me invaluable lessons and shaped me into the person I am today. I would not trade my college experience for anything. That is such a powerful story, Paola. It's so important to be reminded that attending college can have its challenges, but at the end of the day, the experience is worth it despite them. I agree. All right, y'all. Next, we are going to invite Spartanburg native and Pepperdine student Juan Carlos Hughes to speak about his experience. We are so excited to be able to have the opportunity to work with him and to collect stories from outside of the Wofford bubble. He is going to share about his life growing up Latinx, his experiences throughout his primary and secondary school years, and his transition to college and college experience. So, when you're ready, Juan Carlos, you can take it away. Hi, Maddie and Paola. Gracias por invitarme a su podcast. I am so happy to be here and share my experience as a first-generation Latinx student at Pepperdine. I know that you wanted me to mention several things, so I broke it down into three main parts. The experience of applying to college, moving to college, and then afterwards my reflections on how going to college has benefited me because I think a great point that Paola brought up in the first podcast was the importance of Latinos, Latinas, Latinxes partaking in the college experience in the United States. Before I begin, I also wanted to share some background. I identify as a first generation Panamanian American uh, mi papá y mi mamá, we moved from David Chiriquí, Panamá to Spartanburg when I was five years old in 2005 and moving to a space where everyone spoke English, where the majority, um, to be exact, I think it's about 70% is white. It can be difficult for uh, a, an immigrant family to navigate that. And so I remember growing up in Spartanburg, uh, it being difficult to relate to a lot of my peers in elementary school. A lot of my peers would make discriminatory remarks um, like, oh, you must be a wetback or, oh, you're not from here. Uh, Panama must be in Mexico and things of that sort. And I know that many of you could probably relate to those experiences as well. Even though a lot of the kids were mean and nasty, the teachers in my life from K through 12 grade were always very kind and I'm thankful to them. Having nurturing teachers who believed in me actually made all the difference and helped me in applying to college. This leads me to my first point of how was I able to apply and later get into Pepperdine? Well, a big factor were my teachers. And one quick evidence of that effect on my life was Ms. Bixby, my French teacher in high school. Ms. Bixby actually took me in and helped me not only write my college essays um, and craft it, she also helped uh, with the letters of recommendation and then also just uh, support in general throughout my senior year. So I'm very thankful to Ms. Bixby for her help. Ms. Bixby also was able to continue academic excellency in my life by tutoring me for the AP French test. Our high school, Bowling Springs High School at the time, didn't have AP French test uh, at the end of the year. However, Ms. Bixby and I worked hand in hand to prepare myself for that and I actually was able to score a four thanks to her, a four out of five, um, by simply following her directions, uh, buying books from Barnes and Noble about, you know, how to prepare for the AP French test. And she was there to offer help at any time that I needed. And even um, class time, too. I remember she would tell me, come in when my French three kids are here. I was in French four. That was the highest possible level. It didn't even qualify as an AP 
French class. But she said, when my French three kids are here, you can come. We can work on your AAP French and you'll have a wonderful time and also be able to score high on the class. So I liked how my teacher worked with me, my school worked with me but all of that was because I put myself out there and I told them that I wanted to take an AP French course because I know like Zoe had mentioned in the previous podcast um, and Maddie and also Paola that APs are very important they are truly important and even if your school doesn't offer an AP that's okay find a teacher who is willing to help you and then talk to the principal and get the school to pay for the AP test but then you prepare on your own for the AP test and then you get you show not only uh, internal motivation, but then you also show academic excellency to all of the schools you want to apply to. And so my second point now is moving to college. So once I was accepted by Pepperdine, um, I chose Pepperdine because it actually offered me the most financial aid. Uh, I had also applied to, coincidentally, Wofford, but they hadn't offered me as much academic tuition, scholarship, uh, as Pepperdine had, unfortunately. So I went with Pepperdine, um, and it was an interesting experience. I'll just say this. It was a hefty financial burden, even just moving from South Carolina to California. So some tips. If you're an in-state student and you're trying to leave, you're trying to go to another school, um, and especially if it's in another state, like let's say Oregon, Texas, New York, Illinois, what you want to do is make sure that you save up beforehand. So I was accepted to Pepperdine uh, 2017, uh, maybe like April. So during those Mar, Mar, uh, May, June, July, August, September. It's five months. Make sure that you save up. Save up money because you have to pay the deposit fee. Pepperdine's was like 600 And not only that, but our school was having a week-long orientation for students. So there was $100 that each person that was attending that event had to pay, including yourself. So my mom had to pay $100. I had to pay $100. My, my dad had to pay $100. My sister couldn't make it to my uh, orientation. So all of those things add up to a hefty financial burden. So make sure that you save up. Not only was it the student orientation fees and the deposit fees, it was also the flights. Uh, make sure you buy your flights early enough. Um, and then once you're at, for my, for, in my case, once I was in LA, um, the hotel, you have to make sure you have a hotel and that you have a transportation, a car. So rent a car. All of those things are things you have to consider when you're moving to another state to go to college there. I would also recommend you not buying anything and hauling it in your uh, in your bags, your carry-on bags, your uh, luggage. Make sure that you just buy it on campus when you're in California. Go to Walmart, go to Target, and then put it into the rental car and then take it to the college you're going to because that's going to save you more money in the long run yeah so that was moving to Pepperdine that was a little hefty financially but I would say that it was all worth it for me because when we landed here's some experiential (laughs) uh, evidence in my life when we landed we actually went to Pollo Loco if you love Pollo Loco say Pollo Loco So I love Pollo Loco a lot, and my mom and dad, we actually went inside of the store to buy food, and we're used to catering to white uh, English speakers here in uh, Spartanburg. So my mom has had to forcibly learn English, even though all these people over here in Spartanburg have never even wanted to try to learn a new language. They think that English is the only language you need to know in your life. So... All of that to say that my mom started ordering, and all of a sudden, this lady told her, Que tu quieres, mami? What do you want? Mami, que tu quieres? Because she saw my mom struggling because the menu was, was new for my mom. And so the I was just like, wow, this lady is so welcoming. She's not pressuring my mom to speak English. She's giving her this open space of, you can speak to me in English, Spanglish, English, uh, Spanish, 
and my mom responded to her in Spanish, and they had a wonderful conversation. So I would say that just moving to another state and seeing how open LA is to immigrants, how open LA is to Spanish um, speakers, um, Panamanians, Mexicans, Hondurians, Colombians, Peruvians, I think that that is very encouraging. So I encourage you to look out of state if you can and, and, and are willing, but also know that you will have a financial uh, hefty burden at first with the move, but that's possible to overcome if you just save. And that leads me to my third point of why go to college? And I know that's a big question, but I'll try to sum it up into a very quick snippet. Why go to college? Well, I think, first of all, what is college? What is a liberal arts education? And for me, it has been a self-discovery. It has been a pursuit of knowledge and understanding of the world. Because how can you make a change in the world if you don't know how the world works? And I think a lot of people get that knowledge outside of college, and I truly believe that that's possible. But for me personally, I was able to learn through Pepperdine how the world works and also the inequities that exist through this system of how the world works. So why does the system benefit some people and not other people? in Spartanburg, South Carolina, right? Why do we have some people living only a certain age and other people in other parts living more? So that is college for me. Discovery of how the world works, a discovery of even how you work, how I work, how I live. How does my faith intersect with my sexual orientation? How does my worldview, my my race, my ethnicity, taint how I look at the world, um, how I look at other people. And I think the question after what is college, it's what do you do with a college degree? And for me, I think the that the world is your oyster, that the world is there for you to make a change to be equipped with those resources to then finally address poverty, address climate change, address racial or racism, address uh, transphobia, homophobia. Uh, and I believe truly that we need more um, Latinxes to be equip equipped with these resources to fight arm in arm uh, against all of these inequities that are happening around us in our community. So why go to college? Well, why not go to college if those are the resources that you're about to to get? So thank you so much, Madi and Paola um, and Zoe, for everything, um, and I hope that this helped. We are so thankful for you, Juan Carlos, and for your willingness to open up to us and really be vulnerable about your high school and college experiences. I know that the road hasn't always been easy for you, and for most students, but I think that at the end of the day, we can say that our college education and the opportunities that come along with it are well worth it. Being from a small town in Mississippi, I too wanted to branch out and experience new things once I got the opportunity. It wasn't easy for me to go to college 11 hours away from my hometown, for me to leave my family, to move to a new place I was unfamiliar with, full of people I was unfamiliar with and essentially to start my life over from scratch. But because I pushed through some of the harder times, the times when I felt lonely or even a little out of place, I was able to learn just like you more about myself, my interests and my place in the world around me. So on a parting note to you all listening today, I just wanna say that I know it can be hard to try new things, to be the first to do something, to be different or stand out, but wherever you go and whatever you do, I hope you know that you're important. What you bring to the table matters and college can be a great place for you and a better place because of you. So take it easy y'all and we hope you stay tuned for whatever comes next.